The sun has set on another day at Manor Farm. Up until this moment, Manor Farm has been like any other farm in England. But something extraordinary is about to happen. After Mr Jones, the owner of the farm, has drunkenly stumbled off to bed, the animals begin to stir. Old Major, the prize boar, had a strange dream last night and must speak with all the animals. Under cover of darkness, the animals gather in the big barn to hear what Old Major has to say. This is quite an occasion. Old Major begins his lengthy speech with some sad news. His life is coming to an end. But he's had a long life and spent a great deal of it in deep thought. He's troubled by the nature of the lives of English farm animals, short, miserable and exhausting. They are underfed, worked until their bodies collapse and then cruelly slaughtered. Old Major questions why they should accept this terrible injustice. The land is fertile enough to support them all, so why don't they all live in luxury? The answer? The tyranny of man. Remove man and life on the farm would be paradise. Old Major calls on the animals to unite as comrades and rebel. However long it takes, they must pass on his message and keep struggling until man is overthrown. He commands the animals to never adopt man's ways and to uphold brotherhood and equality. Old Major then teaches the animals the song that came to him in his dream the previous night. It's called Beasts of England, and it becomes their anthem. The animals sing it five times through until Mr Jones, hearing the uproar, fires a shotgun towards the barn. Quick, get to your stalls and perches, everyone. A few days later, Old Major dies in his sleep and is buried in the orchard. In the months that follow, secret preparations are made for the future rebellion. The pigs, led by Napoleon and Snowball, use Old Major's teachings to create animalism, a new system of thought. The pigs work hard to teach animalism to the other animals. Some are a bit slow to catch on. The pig's job is made even more difficult by Moses, Mr Jones's special pet raven. He spreads misinformation about Sugar Candy Mountain, a mysterious but alluring concept of the afterlife. Some animals actually fall for it. But the two great cart horses, Boxer and Clover, are loyal to the pig's cause and help persuade the simpler animals. The rebellion comes much sooner than anyone expects. One day, Mr Jones becomes so lazy and drunk that he neglects to feed the animals. Big mistake. By nightfall, the animals are hangry and fed up. Time for some cow power. One of the cows rams the store shed so the starving animals can help themselves to the grain bins. It doesn't take long before Jones and his men bear down on the animals with whips. But the animals turn on the men, kicking and butting them until they flee in terror. Even Mrs Jones slips out of the farm with Moses flapping after her. Hooray! The farm is theirs! After a victory lap of the farm, the animals destroy all tools that were used to control, degrade and abuse them. Snowball even burns the ribbons used to tie the horses' manes on market days. He declares that all animals shall go naked. Napoleon then leads them to the store shed where they eat their fill. That night, the animals sleep like babies. The next morning, the animals rush out into the pasture together, wild with euphoria. After a tour of their glorious farm, they enter the farmhouse. They're shocked by the luxury inside, those greedy Joneses. The pigs decide to keep the farmhouse as a museum. No animal shall live in it. After breakfast, Napoleon and Snowball announce that the harvest will begin today. 
They also reveal that they've learned how to read and write using some abandoned children's books. The pigs then lead the animals to the main gate, onto which the farm's new name is painted, Animal Farm. Then they return to the barn, where Snowball writes the Seven Commandments on the outer wall. These are the laws the animals must now live by. Now to the hayfield. No, wait, the poor cows need milking. The pigs perform this task very well, generating five buckets of frothy, creamy milk. Mmm, they'll all get to share it, right, Napoleon? That evening, after a long day in the field, the animals notice that the milk has disappeared. Surely the pigs haven't kept it all. They wouldn't do that, would they? We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons, check out our other videos.